I think we're cordial, yeah. yeah. It's the lies. I don't want there to be any more drama. <laughs> like she's lying. Wait, what? When was she doing that? I need to tell my truth. It's not fair. Shayna was like messaging and like touching Shayna. It's just disgusting that she's still trying to tear me down when I've done nothing to her. Remember that show Love is Blind? The one where all the contestants sat in pods and started dating without actually seeing the contestants? It was hosted by Vanessa and Nick the Dick Lachey, and it wielded some of the worst results we've ever seen. It gave birth to the arch villain Shake. We're gonna be partying through till tomorrow because I don't work till Monday. Who went on to start his own podcast called Love is Blurry and then Life is Blurry. But I cannot see I'm legally blind. And it also gave way to the super villain himself, Shane, who has the most evil maniacal laugh I've ever seen and he constantly looks like he's on speed mixed with other various drugs. It was a video that I did a while back and didn't think that I'd do another one. But it turns out they're having season three of Love is Blind. But this is not that video, because before that, they actually hosted a video called The Aftermath? No, I think it's called After the Altar, actually. And it shows the contestants as they are now, and how they're living life. And today, I wanted to do a deep, deep dive on them. Even more deep than Deep T herself. And let me just say, Deep T has switched sides. If anybody's been following the series, she used to be with Abhi Sheik, or Sheik as we know him, the guy who's known to every woman as Ugh. She's actually switched sides. She's gone and almost dated another contestant called Kyle, which was amazing because Kyle wanted to marry Shayna. And Shayna is the girl version of Shane. And as we all know, Shane rhymes with Bane, and he should be a villain in DC Comics. I'm just saying. The point is, a lot has changed since this love is blind thing, and I today wanted to actually judge the contestants. I wanted to do something that Nick the Dick and Vanessa haven't done. I wanted to actually see if they've even worked it out on love is blind. So I've written a list, and by the end of it, I want to give each contestant's grades. You know, Shane. the need of medicine. And you know where he find that? A hospital. Maybe a Happy Clinic, which happens to be my new favorite go-to mobile game right now. Happy Clinic. And when I tell you it's addicting, I'm not playing around. Happy Clinic is a super fast-paced time management game that's actually a lot harder than it appears. It's all about strategy, upgrading your hospital, hiring new doctors, and getting to know them both professionally and personally. And of course, getting to know your patients. These kinds of time management games are pretty nostalgic for me. I literally get a serotonin boost every time I play them and have those tough, challenging levels. Like figuring out where to budget the coins and gems I earn from completing levels, and what upgrades and even decor to add to the clinic. It's super important to upgrade your medical equipment and staff so you can address your patients' needs. On top of strategy in this game, there's also a storyline that unlocks as the game progresses, fragments of the nurses' patients' lives, as well as super fun limited time events. Like I said, I've been playing this game non stop everywhere I go. It's super addicting. Best of all, Happy Clinic is free to play and available on iOS and Android. So if you want to try it for yourself, hit the link in my description or scan the QR code. You'll be directly supporting my channel. Now, I would like you to write this down yourself and give them grades beforehand. And if you get the same grades as me, please message me at 16leo underscore because I'll thank you personally. If you don't, then you have to subscribe. So I have some bad news for you already. My main man, Shake, not in the series. They didn't even invite him back because they hated him so much. That's him right now. I don't know what to say. I kind of liked Shake. I mean, he's a douchebag. Let's not, <laughs> let's not get that wrong. But he's a douchebag that's entertaining. And without him, the show is pretty boring. Shake, will you just stop it? Without him, the show's kind of boring. Because all you have is Nick and his wife, the ones who first got married on the series, and a lot of other contestants who I kind of forgot existed. So today I wanted to pose the question to you guys, is love actually blind, and can any of these couples stick together? The answer probably won't shock you. I think you can see what's coming. But in case you can't, let's get straight into this After the Altar series. So they made three episodes of this, they dragged it out as they do on every Netflix series. I'm going to try and weave out the best parts for you, but instead of focusing on just one couple, I guess I'm going to try and focus on everyone, which is going to be a challenge. So in the series returning, we have Shane, Natalie, Jared and his partner, Deep T, Kyle, Nick and his wife, whose name I forgot. Uh, I call this other guy Smiley Jones. 
I think his name's Sal, but I think Smiley Jones is better, and his new partner, and Shayna. There's also Mallory, but I don't even care enough to even write her name. I don't know what happened to her. And then at the end, I'm going to even put a grade down for Shake because I think it's necessary to see where he ended up as well. By the way, if you do like the series, do let me know down below. Maybe I'll do an episode on season three and deep dive into that too. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the show actually starts with a bombshell. They knew what they were getting into because Deep T was originally married to Shake, a brown dude who grabbed someone's ass on national television, then proceeded to say that his wife, or to-be wife, looked a little bit like his auntie. Deep D was pretty good throughout the whole series. I think that she deserved better, and she seems to have found it, with the bombshell news that she's with Kyle in a situationship. So cold. Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? Because I don't have any groceries. <laughs> So that's how the show starts, the bombshells dropped. Holy shit. Deep T and Kyle? I never saw that coming because the last time Kyle was on the series, he was marrying Shayna and he said the most vile gangster shit I have seen. He said that you remind me of your mom and then proceeded to say, will you marry me? That's gangster. That's really not the right way to say it, but I'll be damned if Kyle doesn't do some weird shit. I love him. I really do. I think he's a good character on the series. I really don't have a problem with him. But he does some gangster shit from time to time. He's also he's also got a nose ring. So I think we're bonded for that. So what do you want to do today? Um, I want you to make me look pretty. You already do look pretty. We then skip to Shane and Shayna, the most volatile to-be couple on the series. Now, I don't know if you've watched the series, but if you haven't, not only do they share the same name, but also the same brain cell. Both of them are pretty volatile creatures, and I think personally, they probably should have went out. But instead, Shane chose Natalie, someone who I'll talk more on later, and their to-be relationship is just a friendship that seems to have a little more than it should be. Except, Shayna's now seeing someone. So wait, what's going on with you? Are you dating? No, I mean, like, going to the pods, I was very open-minded. Ah, uh, I love Shane. Shane is one of my favorite people in the series. Not only because he spells his name with a Y, and I always ask why, but this man really constantly looks like he's just hit a deal and then smoked crack in the same amount of time. Like, he, he just constantly has that look. But he's still smiling, but it's a sad smile. He's just an interesting person to look at. I just really appreciate how he looks. And he's a real estate person, apparently. So imagine getting sold a house by a guy who looks like he just stole that house. It's amazing. I thought I found the person I was going to spend the rest of my life. But unfortunately, Natalie said no. Right, so Shane and Natalie were dating, and that was a video that I did something on. And I just did not see the connection there. It was horrible. Shane is a jovial, happy man who is also a very sensitive soul and someone who does not know how to spend money, while Natalie has a plan going forward, tells some pretty mean jokes, and is not really matched up with Shane's energy. Shane needs a high-energy human. He's sort of like a golden retriever that smokes crack. And Natalie is not that, and I had never understood why it even got as far as it did, but they got to the altar, and Natalie was like, ha ha, love isn't blind, but I am. Get out of my sight. And that was that. Shane was sad, Natalie was sad, and now they're not dating. But this is love after the altar, and now we're going to finally hear what happened after. Me and Natalie's relationship over the past year changes as much as I change my underwear. Is that good? With Shane, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad. Does he change his underwear? Does he not? I can't tell. I hate when people say ambiguous things because you don't know enough about them. We've been re-engaged, unengaged, on, off again, all, the whole time. It's all over the place. They should have like a licensed revoker. If you get re-engaged too many times, they should be like, you are Ross from Friends, get out, get out. I think the on and off thing is just a byproduct of being on a show called Love is Blind where you don't even get to know the person well enough. I mean, you're talking to them from behind a pod. I know that it's sort of like social media and that you have to get to know the person online or not in reality. I get that it's part of life now. However, this is a show in which you have to propose within like the day. 
Imagine proposing to someone you met at a coffee shop eight hours later. That's risky. Unless they're offering you like free mocha for the rest of your life, I wouldn't do it. My last conversation with Natalie, it was just a text from her saying that she never wants to speak to me ever again. And I respect that. I mean, I don't know what to say about it, but. I'm sorry, what? Oh my God, even when they mic this man up, he eats his words. I don't know what to say about it. Natalie is just having a No, this was the last day. It's pretty bad. I could never understand what he's saying. And I wish he would just be a little more eloquent so I could fully get what he's saying. But I think what he's alluding to is that Natalie dropped a text and said we're over, which I remain to this day. I don't care how bad your relationship is. I believe that you owe the person a phone call or at least an in-person something like that. You, you got to show them enough respect if you've been through enough time with them. I know there are special circumstances, although... I don't, I don't know how much you respect another person if you're only going to do it through text. I'm not sure of the dynamics of their relationship. And honestly, if Natalie showed up to Shane's house in real life, he'd be like, I don't be Sam, man. He sounds a little like Rocky. That's the story of our, our relationship, you know, just miscommunication. I just want to turn my phone off and just... I want to like eat, pray, love a little bit, I think. And just Eat, you know, pray, love. Yeah. Maybe you need that. I, I do. think we all need that. It's the, yeah, for me. Did you hear that? Can we go back and... Love. Yeah. After he said, eat, pray, love. She's like, really? He's like, yeah. I love. Yeah. It's honestly like a 13-year-old girl. That's the best part. That's the only thing with like me going to my clients' houses. They don't get it. Oh, yeah? Like, my boyfriend actually, he's like such a perfect... Oh, the bombshell. You thought, you thought, didn't you? You were watching the series and you thought because of Kyle and Deep Sea that you thought Shane and Shana were together. But it ain't. Because Shayna has found God. Oh, well, not God, just a Greek guy. And that'll do. And she really likes him and he owns a restaurant. So how can she complain? The experiment was actually very challenging for me. I truly, truly do believe that it really did lead me back to the man that I was meant for. So let's talk about Shayna a bit. She's been the catalyst for a lot of people's troubles. I think that she's definitely had her ability to be a bit of an, a menace. But at the same time, I think that she was always trying to find herself. And although I think she she probably had done some stuff that I would say is regrettable, I think throughout the series, she comes off as decent. Now, I don't know if you'll agree with me because everyone's got their own opinions on these characters, but Shayna seems to have found a person and it seems to have put the drama past her, which is more than I can say for some other contestants. Are you guys judging the characters yet? You better have written some names down. And you better have written some letters too. Does your boyfriend believe in God? Yes, he's a Christian. Yeah. He's amazing. Shane never fails to amuse me with some of the shit he says. I don't even know why he reacted like that. He asks questions as if he doesn't even want to know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is he more dramatic than I am? <laughs> you guys are both dramatic. Yeah. He's Greek. You guys are both dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Did he just come from a place that taught him the meaning of yes? Who among you is new? Over here! Come on up, future yes man. The word is yes, God. Yes! 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 What is Shane up to? What? I thought this man would have learned a few more words in the time that he has been to the altar. He's just like a constant wind-up doll that you every time you pull the string. Yeah. Yeah. He's Greek. I feel like the Greeks invented drama. But that is uh, the start of Shane and Natalie. The thing is that this show is written in quite a... Who am I kidding? It's not written at all. It's just a bunch of animals who are working, plastering things together. They're in that room like in The Simpsons when they had the monkeys to write the scripts. My point is that nobody's actually putting this shit together. It's just a bunch of nonsense. The next time we see Shane is at the very end of the series. So they've clickbaited us. They've YouTubed us. My favorite character, Shake, doesn't exist in the series. And my second favorite character had his hair washed and is done. Now we're going to have to watch the other people. But I kid you not, there is a special surprise. And her name is Jessie. I think it is. The one person I haven't really reached out to. So, the whole series is based on the fact that they're having a party for Natalie's 30th birthday. They're having it at Nick and his wife's house, or maybe just some place that is cold. They're doing wine tasting and then having an 80s party. This scene I left in just to show that they do not like Shake. 
Why? I don't know. I get that he's a very controversial person, but I still think if he's part of the ensemble cast, it would have been at least courteous to invite the man and have him say no. Is Shay? If he's going, I'm not going, so. He's I'm off the list. list. <laughs> I'll like hire a security guard at the door. <laughs> it sort of shows the judgmental nature of the characters on the show. Yes, you may not agree with his theories. I don't even agree with half the shit that he said. However, I still think he's a person and a human and deserves to have his opinions said nonetheless. You may not like him, but he was part of the cast. I feel like it would be really rude to not at least extend the invitation. It makes you feel like a judgy person. It makes us feel like it's high school all over again and the popular kids are ostracizing another kid who has pretty radical takes. It's always better to actually be inclusive rather than exclusive. So I just didn't agree with that one. Personally, I think they should have at least asked, but here we are. And, I'm, and I guarantee the show would have suffered some ratings because people would have wanted to know, or at least wanted to see Shake in a very awkward environment. I know I would have. Do you know how awkward it would be seeing him there? That would have been great television. Why'd you do it, guys? Why'd you, why'd you avoid it? First week or so, I saw that, you know, she would just leave clothes in the bathroom <laughs> floor, or on the bedroom floor. Anyways, let's talk about your weird habits. How about we Let's talk that? about them. You blow your nose in the shower. So this is Ayana and Jared, a couple that I didn't really do much on. When I watched the series, I, I just picked two people that I was really interested in throughout the series. Now, I don't know too much about them, but I'm going back and relearning that they did get married and they were one of the two couples to actually say yes at the altar. So I guess love is pretty, pretty blind. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! They seem to be having a few problems with their relationship. The problem is that Jared can't stop f***ing drinking. That's the problem. This man goes out and he gets hammered with his friends. Seems like a pretty easy issue to fix. Don't do that. But I guess that's a problem. It's been a problem to the point that Ayana had to move the hell out of the house. Way to go, Jared. Love is not just blind, but it's toxic. That's normal. That's not normal. You love to poop while I'm in the shower. Oh, you should have divorced him. I'm sorry, but I don't... Can I get a consensus down below? Please, seriously. Comment TMI before you do it, please. You, If you have a partner, do you... Do you drop a juice while they're in the shower or in the vicinity? I'll tell you right now, I can't do it. Actually, you know what? My partner doing that would be worse. If she's just talking to me and she goes into the bathroom and is like, <laughs> Honey, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I can't do it. There are certain things that maybe I don't want to see my partner do. This is my first time ever living with a significant other, so sure. just learning how to integrate my life with someone who I'm around all day, every day, when I'm not at work. It's... It's a lot. It's a lot. I imagine that it would be hard, especially since you're going on a show called Love is Blind. I don't suppose too many of the contestants actually were living with someone before or maybe even had that experience. So yeah, I guess living with someone would be pretty tough. There would be rules and boundaries that you don't know about the other person. Him loving to spend so much time with his friends, like, it's all created issues. I mean, he stays out till seven in the morning. That is not true. Okay, so yeah, that's that is a big issue right here. They're clearly having some issues already. Ayana is like expressing her concern at the fact that this man is staying out late drinking. He works at a club. He's a bartender and also bouncer, which is a great combination. Can you imagine being like, yes, come in. And then you go into the bar and you're like, what would you like to drink? Were you not just the guy who let me in? Yes, I was. I like the bartender. I'll be also bouncing. You're so thin. I know. So now they're back at the bar. This is where the guys actually meet each other to have a conversation. It's Kyle, Shane, and uh, bartender Jared. It's the diet. I went on the, I went on the, mad, the mad breakup glow up yeah, after. breakup diet. Shane is thin, isn't he? I knew there was something about him when his teeth stood out even more than usual. This man, even when he's not smiling, is smiling, which is, I guess we can say it, it's a little creepy. I think he looks good, but a creepy good. Dude, that's what happens. Yeah. Punching freaking <laughs> dead right. deer and stuff like that, dude. Yeah, you're, yeah. <laughs> Yo. And there it is. There, there. As soon as he does that evil smile, you're like, I don't want to see that at night. Can you imagine him trying to seduce you? <laughs> it's not seductive. Do you guys still talk? We took like a week off of like not speaking at all. Yeah. So I was kind of 
fucked up, I think. But like a month later, you know, we got started talking again. We brought back some good memories and like, you know, we miss each other. I just love how he talks. It's it's honestly like a teenage girl. I mean, it's a teenage girl with like a guy's voice. You know, like we talked and, uh, you know, it was like a month later. We were saying like cute shit and she was like back in my life. And I was like, I really need you. Like, OMG, LOL. I put hard faces in front of the doodles that I was doing back in high school. They're great math. Two plus two equals me and you. You know what I mean? This man is depressed over the fact that he lost a partner. And, uh, you know, on some level, I feel sorry for him. I think he did a lot of stuff that he shouldn't have. I don't think he's perfect by any means. I don't even think he thinks he's perfect. But at the same time, the dude really knows how to guilt people. He's, he's, he's easy to feel sorry for. Yeah, we hit at such a high, too, that yeah. you'll never reach again. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's the scariest really, part. Yeah. Dude, that adrenaline. Yeah. Feel, yeah, yeah. How am I, You're always going to chase that high. You're always going to chase that high. Yeah, that sounds like he's talking about something other than love. You're always going to chase that high. You're never going to get it. I already got it. I took it. I just have it. I have it before the show started. Woo! When, when do you think that you're, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be ready to, to get back out there um, in the dating pool or whatever? <laughs> don't don't make him show the teeth, please. Look, looking for Big Daddy Shane. What is I? Uh, don't, don't call him Big Daddy Shane, please. That's... That's disgusting. If anyone sees me on a dating app, that's a bot. It's an imposter. No, I ain't me on any dating apps. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess Shane basically says that Natalie and him aren't talking and they couldn't fix their relationship. He doesn't really say anything about her. And this is important information because when we watch this whole series, you're going to see the intricacies of uh, what happens after a breakup because that's important. The dichotomy of a relationship is something that I've always wanted to explore. I always think that what people say about you after it's done says as much about them as it does about you. Probably more so. Because what you say about a person after you've left them and after you have nothing to gain really, really is a self-reflection on your character and how much growth or lack thereof you're doing. I psychologized your ass right now, didn't I? I'm a pseudo-psychologist. I'm in my seventh year. I'm an MD. Mad delusional. You and DT are talking a lot, though. Yeah, well, What's I mean, with we're, that? We're, I mean, I love her to death, but it's we're in a weird situation. What the hell is this, man? Whenever this 30-something-year-old is doing this, you have to, like, realize that he's a bit too old, man. I'm sorry, I'm being ageist right now, aren't I? I love her to death. There's nothing going on. We're, we're in a situation ship. Ha <laughs> ha That's some stuff that you do when you're, like, in your teens and 20s. Like, late 20s is just like, hey, are we dating? Nope. Are we f Nope. Well, then we're nothing. Dating f***ing or nothing. That's the situation ship. Bitch, please. I got, I got kids to feed. And if I don't, I should be making kids so that I can feed them. Please, tell me what is up so I can do the f***. That's a direct quote from Gandhi. It's complicated. Like, there is some desire yeah. to date, but like... I don't know you're if afraid you do something, you fuck it up, you're not Yeah, anymore. and she's like the best human being. Look, man, if she's a good human being, then grow her. Grow a relationship with her. If she's a human being, put your make her make her wet by by putting water on her and make her grow. Probably younger us would have had sex right away, but I'm honestly afraid that if we go that far, then I'll lose my best friend and like I don't want to go there unless we're like serious. This is some shit that you say when you're like 15 and 16, like, hey bro, I've got a problem. Like, Cynthia and me are like so close. Like she's my best friend when she plays Skyrim. But I'm thinking if I tell her that I like her, then she won't want to play Skyrim with me anymore. And then you have to be like, what the f is wrong with you? Just show her your Elder Scroll, okay? Just do it. Just, if it doesn't work, and it doesn't work, at least you tried. What are you gonna sit here forever and regret your life decisions that you didn't try? Has anything happened between y'all? There's a lot of sexual touches. <laughs> oh boy. You know what I would do? <sighs> I would cross that line so fucking fast. There we go. There's my boy Shane, as usual, giving advice that's unsolicited, that's good, and not taking it himself. My boy. That's bad though, because I respect her too much, and I've made that mistake in the past where I crossed the line real quick. Oh, it's over. Oh, it's over. Sorry, there's yeah, no, yeah, there's no yeah. coming back. Exactly. I'm sorry, but if, if you, I'm, I'm just speaking from experience here. If a girl really likes you, really likes you, and she's like, you know, oh, come over, Kyle. And you're like, I respect you. She's going to close the door on you. 
because you respected her so much that you went out of her house when she really wanted you to come inside the house. Kyle, sweep her off her feet instead of sweeping the floor. Do something, man. I'm getting really worked up at the fact that he's not actually making the moves. Somebody's got to put the moves on somebody. Otherwise, it's just two people not doing a situation. You guys are lifelong players. This marriage has been a journey for sure. What's the difficult, most difficult part about it? They then move on to Jared, and Jared explains how marriage is tough. And for anyone who thinks marriage is easy, it's not. Thanks, Jared. It's not easy. Marriage is not easy. Like, if anybody tries to tell you it is, it's a lie. Who the f in life is like, hey, marriage is easy. Let's do it. Can you tell them why it's not easy? Can you tell them it's because you go out and drink with your boys and that one thing is causing everything to fall apart? I'm sorry, but I don't mean to be mean, but if that's literally the reason that your partner has moved out because you're too busy drinking with the homies, whether you're a guy or a girl or, you know, whatever it is, if you can't actually do that for the person, you either don't love them enough to make that compromise or you're not ready for marriage. Either of those is right, but you have to let them know. Hey guys! So that concludes the three boys meeting. The next meeting is between Nick, his partner, whose name I still don't know, and Shayna and her partner, Christos. He's a Greek. I actually met Christos a couple of years ago through a mutual friend. And I'm not gonna lie, I was immediately in love with him. I guess love isn't blind then, clearly. As soon as she saw him, she was, I guess love is literally physically the embodiment of what it should be. All right, well, Shayna is literally the opposite of what the show should be. Love it. All our friends around us, they want to like strangle us because we're always like, baby, honey, I love you. <laughs> that sounds like a Christos. I love you, baby. Come here, baby. I'm Greek. We like did a little small talk. We were talking. And and like the first like question after like small talk is she asked me. You guys are gonna die. He doesn't even talk like a Greek but What are you talking about, Shayna? What? I thought he was gonna come out here like Giannis other than Kumpo. I was, what is he talking about, man? This dude just talks, the only thing Greek about him is his hair slicked back. When I'm away from her, like I miss her. Like I miss her. And like if you miss the person you're with, you Great know time. like that's it. Yeah. But have you guys talked, you and Natalie? So at this uh, meeting, Nick and his partner, I think her name's Danielle, actually sort of canvassing Shayna and her partner to see whether they should invite her to Natalie's party. You see, they control the people that they invite. They are the ringleaders. Because Nick and Danielle are like the most solid couple of the whole show. They're the couple that's stuck together and seem to have the least problems. But more on them later. And you're gonna want to stick around for this. I think we're cordial, yeah. yeah. I don't want there to be any more drama. I invited them, but... I don't necessarily want them to come because her and Natalie had beefs multiple times. Then don't invite them. Hey, here's a PSA. If you don't like someone and you don't want them to be somewhere, don't invite them. Don't go fishing for some shit that you don't want. That was a prop. I'm carrot top. I'm prop covered now. If you don't want to invite someone, don't invite someone. You didn't to shake. Why are you doing this to Shayna? If you do want to invite someone, invite someone. Don't have all this extracurricular stuff. We're way too old to be having these extra problems. Love already passed the altar. This is too late to be doing this. It's really unnecessary in my opinion. I care about you. I feel like I'm being portrayed as a certain like villain in your guys' relationship. Your guys' <gasps> fake ass relationship. You think Everyone, I was fake? If you guys think you guys are compatible, that is comical. Yeah. Shayna cosplaying as Pharrell was right. She may have been a little hard and heavy on the source. She may have even had a vested interest, but Shayna did say that Shane and Natalie's relationship was really not made to last. And boy, was she right. Hi. Anyway, it's a day before everyone goes to Nick and Danielle's place and Kyle and Deep Tea are on the phone. Kyle is honestly one of the best humans I've ever met. He's emotional, he's kind, he's supportive. And also he's very edgy, which I love. This is show is seriously for like 12 year olds. Did you just call a 30 year old edgy? Oh my God, he's so edgy, I like him. He likes Green Day. I walk this lonely road, but Kyle is edgy and he is my friend. And I like his butt. Like, come on. 
I just want to be around him all the time, honestly. But it's just a situation ship. It's basically like, you know, you're figuring it out. It's a situation. <laughs> Fine. You have a situation ship. Fine. Some people, they have situation ship. They have things out of their control. You need to figure it out. After a certain amount of time, you got to give it a time period. Is it working? Is it not? Please don't hold someone down if you can't hold them down. Both of y'all need to make a decision. Otherwise, you're just going to be in limbo for the rest of your lives, and that's not good. We're basically acting like we're dating. And everyone probably assumes that we, you know, go home together and we, we spend the night and wake up together. Kyle, seriously, dude, nobody cares that much. You're in your own head. You need to get out of your own head and just talk to this woman. Just you two. Nobody else is... I know that your relationship public. I know that you're both now public figures, but it's just between you two. Let's see how it goes. Don't worry about what others are thinking. Worry about what you and yours are feeling. We do have this front of a relationship without actually have nervous that if I don't get what I want or if she doesn't get what she wants, then I'm afraid it will draw us apart. Is it just me or does Kyle wear clothing that's three sizes too too little for him? Is it, Kyle, could you pick a shirt that actually, you know, maybe fits on you? Maybe. Could you pick pants that maybe even go down to the ankles? Kyle, please. <laughs> I understand that this is the fashion, but it's the wrong fashion. I'm a bit of a fashion lord myself, and I can tell you right now, you're not a douchebag, but you look like one. And we'll kind of lose each other or one of us will push the other one away. That's honestly what I'm most nervous about. Okay, so Kyle clearly has issues with his life here. You know, he's acting like a teenage boy. I just, everyone on the show just doesn't have the capacity to act like at all sometimes. And uh, Deep T isn't doing anything about it either. So those two are limbo. They need to get this situation ship on the way. But we're now heading closer to the party. Right after a wedding, Shane and I, for a moment- Oh. That's right, Natalie. Natalie is an interesting character. I did a video on Shane and Natalie, and I have a bone to pick with some of the people who watched it. Some of those people, when I did the video, were critical of me being critical of Natalie. You guys are wrong, and I'm going to show you why. I let him know I don't love him anymore, and I think him and I have, you know, a very unhealthy relationship and I don't think it would have been good for either of us. Cool. Natalie thinks that Shane and herself had an unhealthy relationship. Perfectly fine to think that. She also said she doesn't love him anymore. Hurtful, but truthful. Absolutely fine. At this point, you'd move on. Or if you don't move on, you wouldn't involve other people in your life. The healthy thing to do is to completely remove yourself from a situation that you feel is unhealthy so that you can grow. If you let me go, then let me grow. That is a saying that I firmly believe and watch Natalie not do this. It's the lies. It's the lies from him. It's like I put so much- Okay, so now she's venting again. Perfectly fine. Go ahead, vent. I can't have someone in my life that doesn't respect me. I know that he still has a lot of feelings for me that I, I'm finally letting him go and he has to let me go. Right, right, right. Because you said you don't love him and he let you go and you let him go. Cool. He lied to you. That's fine. Whenever we look at one side of the situation, you can see that people are hurt. They say things. That's okay. She felt that he lied to him. It might be valid. I watched the series. I think that at times she was pretty mean to him with the things that she said, some of the jokes that she made. This man cannot take a joke he's very sensitive and um although some people are like just harden up shane if that is who you are as a person you need to have a partner who will either com compromise and be like oh i'm sorry i didn't know that offended you let me at least tone it down or shane needs to be like i'll just harden up one or the other but it's not ever just on one person i've never had a relationship or been in one or seen a relationship that was a hundred percent one person's fault and i don't think that this is the case because i've seen it i'm not saying shane's a saint this man is pretty close to the devil himself but he still deserves some sort of retribution i just feel like this is my year okay so she ends by saying shane lied and then it's her year Cool. Nothing really inherently bad is saying yet. So to everyone saying Natalie is cool and sweet and deserves the best, sure. Let's let's go with that for now. But as we move on, I think you'll see what, what I mean. So how's it been going? Like you already know, I, I call, even complain. Uh, anyway, Natalie shifts her attention to Ayana. 
and they talk about Jared and his drinking issues. I got really impatient um, and I kind of like just packed up and moved out. She gave him an ultimatum. I understood that reference. Which, by the way, Nick and the Dick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey made that show, The Ultimatum. Oh my god, Ayana should have been on The Ultimatum. What a callback. Sorry, I don't know why I'm so happy about that. Uh, she's fully warranted to do this, by the way. I just want to say, Ayana saying that this is an issue and not having any change happen by her partner, pretty warranted to actually be like, I'm sick of this. You, you gotta compromise, you gotta see some change. If your partner actually loves you and you bring up a problem, or concern, they should at least address it or try. I don't think she, she didn't say that she left him. She just moved to a place that maybe she could have more space and freedom and time to think. So I think she's well within her right to do so. Oh, like I can't do this, I'm not doing this. Me moving out had nothing to do with the degree of love that I have for Jared. I love that man. That's even sadder to hear because she does completely love him. And I, I, I feel really sorry for her. Jared grew up in a really strict household. So now that he, he has had the freedom to be himself and do whatever he wants. <laughs> like, you know, he just wants to keep going out. I don't get it. Damn, she, you can hear the strain in her voice. And it's kind of sad because it's not really anything that Ayana can do, right? Uh, it's easy to recognize in this situation that Jared is the sole responsibility here. Ayana has done her part by moving out and saying, you either change your ways or we have to part ways. And it's now up to Jared to figure out, is this the life I want to live? Do I still want to be going out with my boys? Or can I commit to actually uh, either compromising or satisfying my partner and her needs? Do you guys know what you're wearing? It's like a highlighter yellow bodysuit. Like a the 80s workout? Kind of, okay. yeah, exactly. Um, is Kyle coming this weekend? Yes. Kyle's coming every weekend. Not this weekend, because you guys will be there. <laughs> Yay, that's fine. Of course fine. he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Have you no, yeah, honestly, we're like just best friends right now. If he ever sees anyone, I'll kill him though. But <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> exclusive friends. They can't be friends with anyone else. <laughs> yeah, you can't be. So friends with benefits that don't include sex. We enter a realm where a man transcribes the responsibility of friendship. We enter the friend zone. You know, if you love yourself so much, you'll exude that love and you'll attract yeah. the right person into your life. Yeah. That's why Shake's not attracting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's actually unnecessary, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, for whatever reason, Natalie, who has nothing to do with anyone's situation, is like, that's why Shake sucked. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, he was a bit of a D-bag. Was it necessary to bring him up on this show still when he has nothing to do with it and no part in it? Why talk ill of someone behind their back? I've never believed in that. I, I just think that's really disrespectful. At least Shake will talk shit in front of you. At least you know what this dude is thinking, because he can't even hold it in. You suck! You look like my auntie. What? What? What is that weird shit coming out of your mouth? You are brown. So are you. Yeah, I like white people. At least I know. Instead of him going behind people's back, it was just like a, a needless joke. I invited just like everyone. We didn't want to disclude anyone because yeah. like i don't know minus shake yeah shane won't be there okay but i did invite jada i like how she says it like we didn't want to not include anyone except two people you don't like it's again that high school dynamic of like being judgy and pretending that you're not judgy why wouldn't you invite shane he's a good dude i thought this was wine tasting as well as a party it seems pretty sad i know it's uh natalie's 30th but i would assume that you know, if it's, again, part of the reunion and airing on Netflix, you'd at least give people the courtesy of inviting them. But anyway. Messages on Instagram I saw between her and Shane to the, wait, to the point that they wait, unsent what it. They? Wait, what? When was she doing that? Can I ask a question? How do you know that, uh, that she was doing that? Did you go through his phone? Because if you did, then we have a whole can of worms to be opened. If Shayna says that there wasn't flirting, like she's lying, they had been... Um, sending flirtatious messages to each other for several months. Several months? You didn't call him out for several months? Excuse me, sorry. How do you know that he did it for several months? Wait, why were they texting for several months? I have so many questions. And Christos, the Greek mythologist man, didn't know any better as well. Both of y'all didn't know nothing. That, If that's true, that is horrible. When I initially heard this, I was like, wow. F*** Shane. And, and f*** Shana. The both of them. However, I watched the third episode of this, and you're going to have to watch it to find out. 
nah, I'm not so convinced. Take it with a grain of salt is all I'm saying. Texting Shane that I'm a liar manipulative and telling him to come after me at the reunion. That's which thankfully sad. like Shane didn't do, but it's like, why are you interjecting? <sighs> Let me get this straight. Shana was trying to get Shane to call out Natalie and say she was man manipulative and everything else. And Shane ignored that so that you could go to the altar, Natalie, and blow him off. Seems like a lose-lose-lose situation for all y'all. I'm just saying. She's so kind in person, but no. like, let's be real, we've all talked about her pattern of lying. That's what I was just gonna say. She's a like... habitual liar. Yeah, she puts the bitch in habitual, right? Oh, brother, nope. This she's all right. For me to be in a place with her because I want to be cordial and like leave the past, but she continues to like interject yeah. herself into my life. But she can't interject herself into your life because you're not dating Shane because you told him that you don't love him. So she can't possibly have any part in your life whatsoever. And it shouldn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? In fact, if you want to be um, healthy and move on, maybe you should even look at the person. I don't know about you guys, but if my ex walked into the door right now, I'd be like, how did you find me? And the second thing I do is like, hey, I hope you're doing well. I wish you the best in life because you are also a human and a person that I've had an experience with. I've grown with you and I'm an adult. I'm finding my own way. You're finding your own way. No hard feelings. Ideally, that is the best way to deal with things. Not everybody can do it. I understand. But the way Natalie holds on to things seems like if she doesn't let go, it's going to eat her up more than it eats up other people. That's all. Shane had posted an Instagram story. She had responded to it. I asked him to show me. There's just comments on like what would have happened if they ended up together. That is really, really, that's, that's inappropriate as f That's horrible. I mean, being in a relationship and seeing that, you'd probably want to break up then and there. I mean, if that happened to me, then I'd definitely do that. However, again, the fact that there's other people saying that never happened and Natalie saying it did means there's only one way to prove it. It's for someone to show someone something. I need some evidence, right? Someone has got to see it besides Natalie. It's really inappropriate. And if that happened, I don't even know why she even tried again or why anything happened beyond that point because Shane should just be exiled and she should have been like, you don't deserve me, clearly. So I don't get it. Also, what, she was replying on a story, something sexual. How do you know? Are you going through his phone? Because that's a, that's a breach. That, that's super, that's really bad. When I talk to Shane about it, he calls it just a mistake. But like, you don't do that to someone you love. Absolutely not. And I completely agree. Again, if anybody could show me this shit, I would be on Natalie's side 100%. It's only because I know what happens in episode three that I'm not reacting the way that people would probably react if this actually had happened. And like, I feel like he just like, honestly shit all over our relationship. It gets a relationship at that point, right? She's not happy. Every time someone's sad on the show, they have to like actually show you how sad the person is by having a song that's like, she is feeling shit and she is going to die. I don't, I don't need the sad song, man. I can tell that she's sad. The tears on her face indicates that. These rocks. Okay, anyway, they're finally going to the house in which they have the party. Everyone's gathering around. Let's move on. Jeez. This weekend is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> I mean, look at him. That's a, that's a cheese board. Don't, don't put it on his ass. They have to put cheese on it. Come on. You smack Kyle's ass with a communal cheese board. That's sin number one. Don't smack people's ass with communal cheese boards. Don't do that. I want a little baby one, okay? Don't throw it your back, bitch. I told you I could do it. All right. Is Kyle made out of helium? Is he made out of pebbles? What the f am I looking at? I thought this man was jacked as hell. Natalie picked him up like she's a power horse and he's riding her like she's a little pony, but she's got all the speed of a stallion. I know this has nothing to do with anything. It's just so interesting to see how light people see him as. Love you. Love you too. Yeah, totally. Oh my god! What the 
fuck is happening? How everyone's just picking him around and throwing him like he's Rey Mysterio and they're all big show in WWE. What is does he have those arms from SpongeBob SquarePants where he inflated them and they're like <laughs> these are inflatable? I'm strong. First time I met Jesse, it was at my sibling Victoria's birthday party. Ah, we now come to the final character in the series, Cell, a character that I didn't even know existed. I completely forgot he was in the series. And the only reason I'm talking about him, even though I know nothing about his relationship, is not because of Cell. It's because of his hilarious girlfriend. She is the funniest person I've seen in a long time. The minute we met, there was something there. What's up, culture? you played this before. No, I'm just kidding. She is such a firecracker, like... Yeah, she puts the crack in firecracker, man. This girl is really wild. She is funny. She is really out there. She is a slice of life and a half. If she is in a room, you know that she is in a room. Fuck up, culture, bitch! Because she will just put a smile on everybody's face. You call your, your partner a bitch the first time you meet his friends. That you gotta... You are on something. Look at that! I got it right, bitch! What you talking about? Bitch, small penis. Yeah, yo. What it do? Let me suck it. Whoops. Yeah, Started yeah. from the bottom. Oh, yeah. Started from the bottom right here. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, her leg went up. I went, oh, there we go. Her leg's just straight up in the air. She also did a drop down and twerk it movement. All within 10 seconds of meeting this woman. Sal seems like the most mundane, not mundane, but most normal chill dude, and his partner seems like she, um, she's what Scarface would have been like if it was a real character and he had snorted all the cocaine. She is a lot. Oh my god! Oh, she even punched him! She said, oh my god! And then punched him! Oh, wow! <laughs> Oh my god, she's got evil eyes as well. She's so cool. Why didn't they have her on Love is Blind? Damn. Where do you find these people, Cell? You went from Mallory to this? I, again, know nothing about Mallory, but I know she's not this. That's crazy. Two married couples, I feel like I'm the odd <laughs> man out. How is it? I mean, is it like, is it it's exceeding your expectations? Kyle, just stop asking about fucking marriage. In there, you ask Deep T out right now. Someone needs to. It's definitely like I, I've, I've been struggling. Don't don't ask Jared about how marriage is. He's gonna tell you the same shit that he always tells people. Marriage is hard for anyone who says it's easy. It's not easy. Look at there's a chalice down there. He's the only person who has a chalice. He's drinking like a Roman king or something. Don't ask him questions. This man is eternally a bartender. T Pain would be proud of him. Please. Ask someone else. As you get oh, older, no, no. you're so stuck in your ways. Like, Dude, I was I'm young. I know, so I like, know. you I'm have stuck. your life. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm, I'm a grumpy old man. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the guys explain that there's a lot of unlearning to do when you're in a serious marriage because the way that you were raised isn't always the correct way, which I would venture is obvious. I think everybody knows that if you enter a marriage, sanctity of marriage, the fact that you're going to be with someone for the rest of your life, you're going to have to make some sort of change and compromise to your character. There is no person who goes into a marriage and comes out the 100% same person that they are. It's just, I think in most relationships, that's not true. So I'm glad that the guys told Kyle that. Please protect my boy. He's, he's a good man. He's just, he's just acting like a teenager. I put up an emotional wall. I'm trying to get better at like regulating my emotion and just telling people what I want. I don't know, it's hard for me to be selfish in that way and just say it. And it terrifies me. Just, just say it, just say it. Man, Love is Blind has hurt these two people more than it's helped them. Both of them just got dealt bad hands and now they're having a harder time expressing how they should be expressing their feelings to each other. Both of them, nice people, probably deserve to go on a date and see if this thing works out. If it doesn't, it's fine, but they're, they're just two people just trying. So then everyone gets super excited that people can juggle and they start making the loudest noises that you've ever heard in a house. And then uh, Ayana and Jared leave because they're like, this is just 
white people go crazy sometimes. It scares the shit out of me. It doesn't scare me. It's just like, it's not very comforting for me. Why? I mean, because we've been having the same conversation repeatedly for months. At this point, I just want to take a second to say Netflix and Love is Blind, you guys need to figure out your audio engineering. You need to figure out how to do this. When people are screaming because other people are juggling, you need to cut off their mics so we can hear the people who need to be heard. Okay, when it's raining, you don't need someone who actually foleys the rain and is like, let's put it over the voices of people. I want to be able to hear people when I, when I watch the series. I don't want it to be like this. Did you get any of that? Probably not. I mean, I think you know at this point how frustrated I am for me to like move out. Yeah. They're fucking growing pains. What? What? What are they saying? Fucking growing pains. Ooh, Netflix. Ooh. You piss me off sometimes. I'm doing everything that I need to do. When you say everything, what are you doing? What's the plan? Because at this point, I've been telling you what I've needed for a really long time, and you've been like, uh huh. Again, Ayana is the one person I just genuinely feel sorry for because she's made it known, she's discussed and communicated to her partner. I need you to make some sort of change. And she's even given him the opportunity to do that, which is the last thing you do. Sometimes people will say, I need you to change and not give you the room to do so. She's even done that because she clearly loves this man. And she even asked in that last sentence, what is your plan? And then he joked about it. And then they stopped talking about it. Bro, you just be so irresponsible sometimes. It's like, I love you as a person, but sometimes like I don't see the value of having you as a partner. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's, that's cold, but it's necessary. What do you say when something's cold and necessary? That's nold. Damn, that's nold. She's not wrong. It's just, it's cold. This is like sexting thing So now they go wine tasting and uh, I guess this is the bonus episode of Love is Blind. No arm to hold. <laughs> uh, I find it very funny because the one scene that I know about Mallory is that they ask Sal why he fell in love with his current partner, Jesse. And they both just explain why they really love each other in front of someone's ex. Can you imagine sitting down in front of your ex or opposite your ex and all of your friends are like, so how'd you find your partner and why do you like them? And your ex proceeds to say all of the shit that you didn't do that his or her partner actually does do. What a shitty group of people. Love is blind has some real douchebags. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about each other? I really love how open and honest. Natalie asked, what's your favorite thing about each other? When she was literally at the party asking Mallory if it's awkward. And she's like, just focus on us. Don't worry about it. And she literally in front of her is like, what, what's, your fa what's the favorite thing about? Cassell, tell me what's your favorite thing about your current girlfriend, not your ex who's sitting three people beside you. Go on. What a shit star. I feel really hurt and I feel like we work at everything together. Yeah. And it's great. Like. She just is the one that makes, like, life <laughs> yeah. more interesting, you know? In front of your ex-partner? Really, Natalie? Mallory's just not gonna feel happy about this. Well, you guys are both singers. Are you guys gonna start a band? Oh my god! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Can I get front row tickets? Yeah. <laughs> is that opera? No, it's three X's on X Factor. Dude, we're all getting hypothermia. <laughs> God damn, I didn't know she laughed like that. And and the award for the boss laugh is taken from Shane and now goes to you. 59 miles left. <laughs> Let's go. God, she's still doing it. Like the thing that sucks is like, if you like a friend and then... So now we're at the wine tasting and Kyle is like, hey, I need some advice from the married couple, Nick and Danielle. Can you tell me, should I actually turn the situation ship into something more? And they smack some sense into him and are like, yes, say and do something. You know you have more emotions yeah. and you're waiting and then you both kind of like do other things. Like that could also ruin the friendship too. Every time I talk about DT, I get emotional because she deserves so much. I know, I know. Okay, and Daniel starts crying at the thought of Deep T deserving so much. I mean, I guess that's a cool friend. Nick then gets Kyle close and says, you, you need to go for it. 
Like, I, I want you two to be together. <laughs> I know, I know. Selfishly, Selfishly yes. Yeah, so I have yeah. so much fun when we <laughs> I know, I know. All of a sudden, at this juncture, it turns into an 80s special because, as we've said barely, but at the start of the show, the last episode was an 80s themed party. Why? For content? I don't know. It has nothing to do with anything, and nobody actually watches this damn show because of it. I'm gonna need you to wear eyeliner every day. I'm turned on. And I have to say, Kyle, whoop, he looks great. Oh, that caught me off guard. Whoop. A woof! Yeah, I guess eyeliner does look good on men. If someone gets me some eyeliner, I might wear it. Please. Can you turn the boombox up? I can't hear it. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's out of batteries. <laughs> That's not funny, but because you like him, you're laughing. Go out. Go out. You two, go out. Go out! Do it! Just do it! I am a lucky man. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sal then walks out with his partner who uh, has just met everyone at the party and shows them not only her personality but her two ass cheeks. To be honest, I, instead I'm like covered. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Jesse looks hot, but I think Jesse's personality really is what bonds them. <laughs> Jesse's personality is what bonds them. She lets out a war cry from Braveheart. I find them cute. I find the fact that Sal is so not what Jesse is pr pretty cute. I mean, if they were both like that, it would be obnoxious. Having one like that who doesn't care that the other one's like that, somewhat wholesome. Yeah, I, want to run away. I need to address the elephant in the room and talk to Mallory. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the wrong way to say that, Sal. I need to I need to address the elephant in the room, Mallory. Not the right way to say it, but I get what he's saying. Uh, Sal still wants to explain himself and seek closure. And uh, although, again, I don't really know what happened. I know that he said no at the altar to her, basically when he was trying to actually court her the whole time. So people were kind of confused as to why he did that. And at the end, he'll tell you his excuse. Now, What's up? Like How are you? I talk with you? I appreciate everybody as a group. Okay, okay, Netflix, come here. Come here. Come here. Stop it. Naughty. There are people literally screaming like it's a Street Fighter event while you're trying to have a proper, decent conversation that forwards the plot. Not good. Check in and see how you were doing too, though. Like, it's really fine, yeah. No drama here. Like we are good. Right? Yeah. There's nothing. Unlike Natalie, Mallory and Sal end up talking, and he says there should be no bad blood, and they actually talk it out. Again, I feel like the reason that I bring up Natalie is because she didn't invite Shane and still has issues to this day. And the best way to do this is to talk them out. It's good. It's good to heal. It's good to have space. But I don't think they're always going to have these reunions. And maybe it offers you a good amount of time to ask maybe Shane and Shayna if they had been doing what they said and why this happened and why they didn't come clean. It's a good way to get closure and then maybe move on from a situation instead of ignore it and harbor those feelings that'll probably hurt you in relationships in the future if that happens. So Sal is doing the healthy thing and I think Natalie should take from that. This of course is ruined by Jessie and her ass cheeks coming over and saying, can I talk to the ex-girlfriend of Sal? Which I just find hilarious because she doesn't even know her. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not coming in here to like, like intentionally make anyone feel bad. So in the past, I'm like, I was never worried about you. Like, trust me. Lovely. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse wants to have a talk with Sal's ex, Mallory, and is like, I was never worried about you. You know, it's been so long, you're old news, and it's okay that you're here. Jesse's my favorite. She has no regard for anyone. Her ass cheeks are hanging low. She just screams really loudly like war cries. She also laughs like a hyena and has no self-awareness. And I absolutely love it. This is what Love is Blind should have been. It should have been a lot of characters like these. And Shake. Why didn't they have more people like this? Mallory's putting up her walls, and that's okay. Feel like 
I made the right choice at the altar with Mallory, 1,000%. We weren't for each other. Sal then reaches his closure and says that he 1,000% made the right decision, which is a very... <laughs> that's hurtful to hear. Imagine watching this back. 1,000%, man, that's like 990 in more percent than 10, but it's also 900% more than 100. I made the right decision. I would never marry her. That's, oh God, that's tough. I've never felt so uncertain about where I'm headed, but I've also feel so certain on who I want to be with. Meanwhile, Kyle and Deepti get to their room and start having a serious talk. Finally, the two that I want to do to just do it. Wait, I have an extra banana. <laughs> I'm sure he has an extra banana for you if you just talk. Right now, I don't have any desire to date anyone else. And I don't think she does either. And date! We like each other. And, but like, you know, maybe it's not right in case something doesn't happen in the future. And maybe it won't work out. So I guess we'll never date and just have sexual tension. And, you know, for the rest of our lives, just be like, what if? So yeah, it's kind of like if we're not seeing other people and we don't have any desire to, then it's kind of like, well, we need to try. That's what I'm saying, Kyle. That's what I'm saying. Do it! I don't know why I have a kid's fishing rod. Don't ask. It's for the podcast, anyway. We should try dating. We're getting too old to, 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 to be unclear, and we're kind of wasting each other's time. That's ex- Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Fist bump it. Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't know why I took this many episodes for you to finally reach this verdict. The judge has ruled. Boom. Duh. In limbo. So, I just have to ask. Are you happy, like, how things are going? It's like an awkward James Bond. I'm 007, I don't... Like, people around us notice things like that. You know, they, they, they keep, they, they're always, you know, questioning us. It's nice to have that bond where we just, like, know each other so well because it's so easy to be yourself then. Can you just ask her out? I didn't, I'm sorry, this verbal diarrhea is just much. I can just see that you and me are just like, you care about me and it's really important because I care about you too. And I knew if I had been dying in a car crash, you'd give your kidney to me and say, Mwah, here you go because we are just good friends. But maybe friends who have sh shared kidneys are more than friends. Maybe they're kidney beans and you are my little bean and you know what I mean? I'd like to, I wouldn't want to soil this friendship. Really, I'd like to make a family tree with you. I don't want to leaf out of the situation. I'm not sure why I'm making so many uh, nature puns, but n as nature intended, we should f I can tell that you're like scared. Definitely. I see it. Nike should make wedding rings and give it to people like Kyle. And as soon as you put it on, they're like, just do it. It could be the best thing ever. And it could be amazing. Mm -hmm. But then what if it doesn't work out and then I lose it? Now I'm just like more confused than ever because obviously there's feelings there. Did you not know that before? <laughs> What am I, what am I, what? Oh, okay, all right. I want to settle down and I want to find my husband. I want to like, you know, have kids and I want to start a life. I want to start a family and I want to build this empire I keep thinking about. Then you have to try. Every time people ever say they want something and don't do it, they're shooting themselves in the foot. If you want something, you have to try and you have to risk the consequence of failure because failure isn't actually failure. It's just a stepping stone to success. If you don't have a good relationship, you might have a better one next time. But you have to risk trying. Otherwise, you'll never go anywhere. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Come on, you guys. Natalie has this super professional front to her. In case you thought I was being critical of Natalie, why don't you let my main man, Kyle, tell it? But behind the scenes, she can be an instigator, stir up the drama between everybody. She's a shit stirrer, you can say it, Kyle. We're all living our own lives, but it's like, Natalie, can you just enjoy the moment we're having? Like, Shayna's like living her own life. It's like, let it go, Natalie. So essentially, Kyle was saying what a lot of people probably were thinking at this time. Natalie, for someone who said that she's let go and said that she doesn't love Shane and she's completely over it, ceases to let go of the situation and still has a lot of feelings and resentment, which she is, you know, still within her right to do. However, the way that she goes about it and sometimes the way that she comes off always seems like she has no part to play in it. And also, 
it doesn't seem healthy, like I said, to not let go of the situation because it's not going to help her in the long run, especially when uh, Shane is not talking about her and when Shayna has another partner and they've moved on. Closure is one thing, but continuing to hold on to feelings never really gets you anywhere. And that's really what Kyle was saying. Shane and I were so close to the question. Oh, that was a, that was a handshake between Christos and uh, Kyle. Kyle married Shayna or tried to. I fully forgot that they're so mismatched that they're like, there was no way Kyle and Shayna was ever going to work out. I completely forgot they were a thing. We actually talked about giving it another chance, but... And Deep T just went and hugged Shayna, even though she's with Kyle who's potentially going to be her man. This is what we should be doing. Just oh, everyone's okay with the situation. That's what we need. Doors closed forever. I need to tell my truth. It's not fair that I'm lying for people that have lied to me. I mean, I think she was in a secret relationship with Shane. Okay, so you think she was in a secret relationship with Shane. Right. I don't know what evidence there is to support it because the first time we heard Natalie talk, she said that Shane and, and Shayna were replying to each other's stories. Then she said they were sending sexual things and flirting. Then she said they're in a secret relationship. So because she keeps changing those aspects, I'd really like to know like what evidence there is to support that. I know that's your truth, but I feel like then you need to ask Shayna. Somebody needs to ask Shayna if this is the truth. Somebody needs information and answers because I'm confused now. She's continued to lie and be dishonest. And when confronted with the truth, continues to either deflect or deny it. And I don't need that anymore. Right, right. So Natalie wants to get to the bottom of this. She's like, I don't need the lies anymore. I don't need the truth. Unfortunately, in life, we aren't always afforded the truth. No matter how much closure we want in the situation, sometimes the other person isn't willing to give it to us. And you have to be able and willing to move on despite closure. It's one of the hardest things in life to not get closure and still be okay with the situation. But it is part of life sometimes so hopefully natalie figures that one out either way but shana's right there you can ask her at least uh, <laughs> so shana got engaged to christos last night and everyone's now stealing natalie's thunder and she looks peeved when christos proposed i was in shock. I literally had no idea. He did throw me off. He's lucky that I had my nails done because, I, again, I had no idea. This is, if, if you pause the camera on his face, that is the most Greek-looking face I've ever seen. He's like... Well, how about it? Do you want to get married? <laughs> Can we see the ring? Jessie's so funny. This woman has not even met Shayna. She doesn't even know. Shayna's probably like, who the? Who is this? Six seconds into meeting Shayna. Can we see the ring? Can we see receipts? Girl, get it. I'm Jessie, by the way. My good. Jessie just inserts herself into every situation. That is the funniest shit. Of course I'm going to have like raw feelings towards Shayna. In my eyes, she is the other woman. Shayna was like messaging and like touching Shayna. Like, do I? No, yeah. Okay, so now Natalie has become, uh, I would I would say at this point, too much. Because now she's like, do I tell this other guy who, who just got engaged to Shayna the truth? But... It's her truth. And sometimes what you say may not be okay. Like, this is a hard thing to talk about. But sometimes your input in the situation may not be necessary. You may not actually be the catalyst in their lives. And maybe if it doesn't involve you, you shouldn't say it. If that makes sense. I know that's a hard thing to digest, but sometimes... It's not the time or place for you to do it. Because Natalie has no bearing in Shayna and Christos' life. She's not going to be in their life ever. So she shouldn't even think about telling them. She shouldn't think about telling them something that she thinks but maybe doesn't have proof of. 
It just seems really, really vindictive at this point. Your truth and the truth might be different, and therefore I don't think you should be saying it. And then the girls went out to dinner yeah. the next night. Well, anyway, Danielle says it because, I don't know, I guess she feels like she needs to. Natalie and Shane were still dating, that you were like sending him flirty and DMs and stuff. Not at all, I was with him. No, oh, like, I can't. Garbage. No, no, I... Because like, and they were like, Shane never wanted Shane. So, obviously, uh, Shayna denies being in a relationship, a secret one with Shane, even though Danielle actually asks, which, you know, at least she asked and didn't threaten or say anything, so yeah. Give Shayna a chance to explain herself. Let's hear it. The only messages that I have with Shane are purely platonic. We're gonna leave in like five months. Yeah. Why? We're leave in five months. Really? Why? Trust me. Oh, whatever you want. Trust me. Whatever you want. Okay. I'm mm. sure you know. uh, no. <laughs> Okay. Man, she really found a guy who loves her. We're gonna leave in five minutes. But why? We're gonna leave. Okay, baby. Whatever you want. I have no idea what she's talking about. The most scandalous message that we probably have to each other is like, sweet baby, or it's just disgusting that she's still trying to tear me down when I've done nothing to her. Okay, uh, yeah, so we have this situation in which, unfortunately, Natalie's still talking about Shayna because she has feelings. And uh, to do with her relationship, that's fine, that's bad. And uh, you know what, I even, I don't mind Natalie saying it once or twice because I remember when Shayna called Shane over and said, you guys aren't going to work out. So I feel like Natalie can do one or two blows and then after that, it's too much. Because these two are getting engaged and really married and they're not even on Love is Blind, they're on Love is Actually Correct, Let's Get Married, I, I just don't think it's warranted anymore. It's unfortunate that this weird situation happened, but I'm sorry, but you just shouldn't be taking it past a certain point. I don't want to have a conversation with Shayna because there is so much sadness and pain over the relationship between Shane and I. Thank Bye, guys. Tell Adios. Danielle we love her. We will. Um, and, and that's how it ends. I, Natalie sort of makes the situation awkward because Shayna hears that she's been talking behind her back. She decides to leave and neither of them talk, which is kind of sad because they should have probably had dialogue and explained to each other both of their sides maybe they would have both been better off unfortunately i think shayna comes off as the better one in the long run and i don't mean better person but i mean like because she's found someone and she seems to be in a happier place it seems like she's less bitter about the situation and shane's still in uh good terms with her natalie's the only one who has bad terms with shane and shayna and that's fine to cut them out of your life if you want to be a healthy person and this is your your perfectly fine but you shouldn't still let them affect you because if you let them affect you then you come off as being like this type of person so i think that's you know something that's really sad and then christos christos suddenly gets dragged into this this dude's just being a happy greek man he has nothing to do with it and it start you start involving people who just don't deserve to be hurt so there's that's my issue with that but anyway, that's the party. Sal comes back home and he talks to his sisters and he explains why he left Mallory at the altar. Because remember, he's now with Jesse, the one who screams and shows her ass cheeks for weeks. But now he's actually telling the world why he left Mallory at the altar because apparently nobody knew. I didn't even know he existed. With Jesse, it's just been effortless. And she's great, you know, like, I mean, yeah. you've met her. I know. Spent yeah. time with her. And... Yeah. I know I'm a good person. She makes me want to be even better. You you must really love this, Jesse. She makes you want to be a better person. Okay, all right. I protected Mallory throughout this whole experience, and I don't know why. I think I should have spoken my truth more. I don't want to protect Mallory anymore, and I don't need to protect Mallory anymore. I'm done. Anytime someone says the words, speak my truth, you know there's going to be one love inside the story. I just, every time they're like, this is my truth. And what it means is that's not going to hold up in court. So I don't know what Sal's going to say, but you, you better make it good, buddy. A week before our wedding, we had plans. We had like a, a shopping date, right? And I didn't hear from her for two hours. But the last phone call that I got from her, she was slurring her words. Here, Sal, what's up? What's up? I'm at the store. What's good? What's you? What? What? Man, what are you doing? That's conceivably how it sounded. I was just 
example. Some dude like throws out an empty cup of coffee from his car and I hear someone say like, that's my coffee. And I was like, wow, that sounded a lot like Mallory. And Mallory's in there with some random guy. Mallory's in there with some guy and she's drunk in the middle of the day, two hours after this man went shopping. He is a, he is very cordial as a shopper. Just drunk. That was the night that I actually came and stayed with you all because I couldn't stay at that apartment. Okay. Well, you know, at first I heard the story. I was like, oh, crazy. Secondly, I think you guys should have a talk about it. And, you know, if you didn't see them doing anything and she's just drunk, maybe that's an Uber and they're just very, the Uber guy is like, yeah, I hate coffee. <laughs> that's my coffee. Maybe that's what it was. You know, there could be a lot of possibilities is all I'm saying, Sal. Uh, if you really love this woman and you left her because of that without actually communicating the idea, I think it's, I think this is really fast. But I do think at the end of the day, he seems to have found someone he really likes. So maybe that's good. Even Natalie went against Mallory and said they're good for each other. So I don't know what to say. I mean, as long as he's happy, I guess. Going into the family dinner, I am nervous. I haven't seen Ayana. So we then move back to Jared and Ayana. And uh, now she brings her family over. The family is trying to tell Jared to do the same thing I've been saying this whole episode. Do anything to help your relationship. Do anything other than what you're doing to help. Try. Motherfucker, try. Over the past couple of months, like I've definitely been struggling. Ayana moved out. No reason for me to be out in the club and she's going home. Why am I still here? For what? If you know this, then why don't you fix it? Unless you don't want to. And if you don't want to, why don't you tell her that you don't want to? As hard as it is, if you really care about the person, let them know. Hey, I like drinking more than I like you. It's crazy, but this is me. You can't fault someone for being real. They may not be right, they may not be ethical, but being real at least saves you the trouble of guessing. You either stay with her and change, or you don't change, but you let her go and find someone who will change for her. Come on, Jared. Have you identified, Jared, the issue that, that drives you to drinking? I have this persona of, I'm the social one. Actually, you know, Ayana's family seems to be a great, great base for her because they're asking questions that are not provoking or not like mean towards Jared. They're actually asking him to solve a problem within himself by um, exploring maybe why that is. Really good Good family. Really good family. I'm, I'm the leader of the pack, so to say. Most times when we go out, I'm that guy, and my friends look at me as that person, and they put me on this pedestal. You yeah. have some friends. So Jared says his friends like him drinking, so he drinks. This is the answer of a teenager. Do you see yourself as Jared pre-marriage, or do you see yourself as Jared the married man? When you put her first, the blessings are going to come right back to you because she's happy. I think that's Ayana's dad or one of her family members says a very, very beautiful thing about asking yourself, are you going to put that pre-marriage Jared first or are you going to put the marriage Jared first? And if you do, then you'll have the blessings of, you know, a wife and beautiful woman who will probably take care and really love you because Ayana has never faltered in the fact that she loves this man. I don't really know what her, if she has major issues or anything that's making him want to drink. I think this is all self-inflicted by Jared. And and this poor woman is just trying to wait for him to grow and come to his senses. And maybe he's not going to do that. And maybe she has to go and find someone else. It's sad, but it's, it's, it's Jared. <laughs> God damn it, Jared. We got to face our stuff, even when it's not easy. We said better or worse. This is worse. If you're going to stay, you got to give him a complete opportunity to make it right. Man, I think that's Ayana's sister, and she says the most baller shit ever. She's like, hey, we're not just going to put all the blame on Jared. If he's going to change, you have to allow him to change. That's baller. This is a beautiful family right there. Congratulations to your family. Yeah. It's a little bottle. Okay, so, uh, you know, they start playing the uplifting music. Which, you know, in Netflix means that everything's going to be okay until the cameras stop rolling. Then everything's going to be tragic. Uh, we go back to Deep T and Kyle. And they're finally, hopefully, going to make the move. At the reunion, I told Deep T that I made a huge mistake and I didn't ask her to marry me. And it seems like right now I'm at that crossroads again. She's the most important thing in my life right now. And I, I love her. I'm not even going to say it. Just, Kyle, just, just figure your shit out. I could either make the leap and ask her to be with me, or I can let it go again 
and then I might have the same regret. You mean to tell me you decided to wear shirts that were eight sizes smaller, but you couldn't decide whether a person you say you love is worth actually chasing and asking to be your girlfriend, huh? You said that you wish you married her, but you can't decide to ask her out? Kyle, you work in construction. Did a cement block fall on your head? What is wrong with you, sir? Ask her out. The reason I think we haven't really moved forward is just because I don't want to lose you as a friend if it doesn't work out. I want to just start a relationship, like a legitimate relationship. Yes, sir. Just say the words. Will you go out with me, man? If you want to ask someone out, Ask them out, Kyle. Did you ask her out? I definitely want Kyle. I want him to be my boyfriend. Eventually, I feel like you know, I want him to be my husband, you know? God damn, you guys should have asked each other out ages ago if you want that. Like, he's the first thing I think about when I wake up. He's the last person I talk to before I go to bed. I look at him and I'm like, I could see myself doing this for the rest of my life with you. And you didn't think to ask him out? You thought, I'm gonna be with you for the rest of my life as a friend. Did Shake really f you up this badly? Did Shake, did Shake mind f you? I, I would believe it if you said it. He could be my lifelong partner. You're gonna be my girlfriend. Yeah. Oh my god. There we go. That's it. It took, it only took three episodes, but we finally got there. Congratulations. And that is the saga of Deep T and Kyle, but more on that later. So we finally move on to the third part, the final part of the series, the one in which Shane is seen for the first time after the party. By the way, fun fact, I actually looked up the name of the second episode and it says, it's my party, I'll gossip if I want to. Even the producers are just not in favor of Natalie at this point. Quite the heel turn, if you ask me. So, as I said, it's after the party. Shane comes through, and he knocks on the door and sees Shayna. And they meet inside her boyfriend's restaurant, which is pretty bolo. What's the password? Crop tops. <laughs> that was Winnie, how are you? <laughs> That's, well, <laughs> good callback, I guess. Still a little creepy, but anyway. Oh, I love crop tops so Do you love a crop top? I brought coffee. Oh, thank you. But I think we might need a little more. You brought coffee to a restaurant? That's really Shane-like. I have some tea. Please. <laughs> Shall we spill? Yes, let's go. Okay. I think Shane is definitely misunderstood. I think people want to peg him and judge him. <laughs> people want to peg him? God damn, maybe. You guys are really not good with your words. Both of y'all, it's just Shane's not good with his head. You're not good with your words. You'd make a... Oddly entertaining couple, I will say, if Love is Blind Season 4 ever comes out and Christos ever breaks your heart, I'll be looking out for it. They have no idea how um, good of a heart he has. <laughs> more? Do you want more? That's fine. Especially after everything that I just found out. What the f*** is the point of the coffee, just by the way? If they're pouring what looks like butter into those chalices that have been everywhere in this whole video. That Natalie's spreading, I, I want to tell him what Natalie is saying about me and Shane. Cheers. I'm sorry, Um, this now goes on to the fact that Shayna, who did go to the party for five minutes, heard what Natalie was saying through Danielle. I feel like a damn school kid telling the story, but she now is like, hey, let me tell Shane that because I think he deserves to know what's being said about him. Maybe she shouldn't have said it. Maybe she should have. It depends how Shane reacts. And let's see. These rumors are honestly petty high school drama. We are grown adults. This is what I've been saying the whole time. It's just petty high school stuff, and I have to be the guy who tells the other kids. I'm, like, not in the popular group, but I'm not in the nerd group. I'm, like, in that middle group who's like, guys, have you heard the story about Shayna and Shane? And they're like, dude, math class is on. Please stop. Natalie is telling everybody that she went through your phone and found really inappropriate messages between me and you. And my thing is this, can I just vet? It's slander, it's lies. The side of being lies, it's a breach of privacy. Like, I don't care how much of a partner you are. If your partner doesn't want you to go through their phone, there's one of two things that can happen. You can either get very suspicious and leave, or you can ask to see it. You can't take it. Because that's a breach. I don't think that any partner should be going through the other partner's phone. They should exercise trust. Or, you know, on the other end, the partner should be like, I trust you enough, here's my password. If you want to go through it, you can. Whatever the case is, it shouldn't be a, a breach of privacy before knowing and finding out things. And if you do, 
I mean, that's really sad. Maybe they were hiding things, but that's a communication issue first and foremost. You don't want to have that because there's no looking back from that. Like either way, what if you looked through it and you found nothing? Then there's a whole nother issue that you don't trust them. I just don't think it leads to good things. I can tell you from personal experience. And of course it happens when I'm not there to defend myself. No, too. I know. And that's the worst part about it. Like we've always been appropriate. Like we've never been hung, we've never hung out alone. No. Now, have we ever had sex? Have you ever done anything? No. I don't know. I don't know who to believe because Natalie said that Shane admitted he was uh, saying some stuff to Shayna. I know that Shane initially liked uh, Shayna, but I also know that Shane made the decision to go for Natalie. And, and I really, I don't know what to say, like, it's his word against hers, and I don't know who to believe. Until I see evidence of the situation, it's hard to be like, oh, okay, this is definitely the way it's gone. I haven't seen Shane be too much of a flirty dude, to be honest. I've seen him be an airhead, and I've seen him say some shit that comes from his heart, but I haven't seen him really, really do anything heinous. Well, we're both easy targets, that's why. I know we we're are easy. easy. We, don't, we, don't, we don't help ourselves out very well. And I don't want to take high it's energy, just... they mistake that as flirting, yeah. or like... Yeah, regardless, I know her motive, I know her at game by it. I do I do also want to bring up the fact that, yeah, those two are high energy and they seem to have better chemistry just off the bat. And maybe some people take it as flooding. I think Shane can take it too far and I think Shayna can take it too far. But I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. I guess if they didn't do anything, it's hard for me to really say what happened. It was too much. I said the door's always open with her. Um, it has to be, I thought. You know, it's like I've never loved someone. I. You know, as much as I thought I loved her. What's going on, guys? It's uh, also sad that Shane, after ages, still said, you know, he, he thinks the door's open and he's never really loved as someone like he's loved Natalie. I think he's wrong. I don't even know. I don't. If that's love, then, oh, man, I'd hate to see him hate someone because they did not look in love. They just looked like two people who might have needed each other. And although Shane was committed, I don't think he even knew to the extent what that required because they, they weren't good together. So the right thing happened, it's just, it happened in a very toxic manner. Both of them are probably going to do well without each other. This period of time where they're not able to amicably split and communicate that, that's going to harbor some resentment. What's up, man? Just then, Christos comes in to make sure nothing bad's happening. He's like, hey, you are, you are sex, my wife? Well, no, you are Shane. You brought her coffee? She is not drink, she drink, drink. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I'll see you. You, uh, you want to shake hand? Oh. I kiss wife in front of you. You never kiss her. Right? Tell him what you're saying. Yeah, please. Oh. Tell him what you're saying. I, I don't want to hear her side because I yeah. know she's age dramatic. Like, it was just there were a lot of clicks. Like, yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, that's how it was. Like, all over the place. But yeah. I felt like in the beginning, it was a little, like, nerve wracking. Uh, you know what? Christos actually said pretty much exactly what needed to be said. He, was, he said, it's a very clickish crew. And it is very cliquish. Everybody's there in their own cliques. Whether you say it or not, they're pretty judgmental. Besides Deep T and Ayana, most of these characters already had their own agenda. Whether they said they did or didn't was irrelevant. And yeah, it felt pretty clicky. It felt pretty high schoolish and pretty dramatic for people who were turning 30 and are around that age. I mean, you look like a star that night. You, oh, she did. honey. I, I wish I had someone in my life. 100% especially because I wasn't even there. That's the worst part. Like, I wasn't you weren't even there to find yourself. Uh, Shane then asked Christos if he's seen the messages between him and Shayna, which is probably the best inclination because it's someone who's with someone else. And if they think it's too much, they'll probably bring it up. And here's what he has to say. I, I laughed when it. I saw it because I don't think it was anything. Everything that we do now moving forward is always like, I think. So he said he laughed when he saw it because he doesn't think it was anything. Of course, I do want to bring out the possibility that Shayna didn't show him everything, but I think, and I would hope that if she's engaged to this man, she would probably not be lying to him and show him everything and tell him everything and not hide the truth i would hope so and i'm going to f whenever someone gets married whenever someone does something like that i fully i just go okay i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt because they want this to work so let's hope she showed uh, uh, christos everything and he was like it's okay baby i'm from greece i can take it it's all right so if going by what he said it seems okay going by what natalie said it's not at all okay so we're sort of canceling each other out all we need now is to actually see the evidence. But are we going to? 
You have to wait to find out. You know, it's elevated. Don't but it's because it's me. It's because it's me. Yeah, it's something. Yes. I'm gonna head back to the back. Okay. Do some work. Yeah. But. Love you. So, hey, it's nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting yes. you too. Hope to see you guys around again. I'm going to go to the back to do work, which I actually do. You two have your coffee. Shane. Wait, 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 sorry, but man, you you look good with that hair back. Uh, but don't kiss. But maybe. So to hear about something funny, he wants to do an old-fashioned tower. Does he? If you're in Greece, you can come. No, I just happen to be in Greece. I have so many single girlfriends. I have so many people like, oh my god, Shane, is he single? Oh. Are you dating? No, I'm not dating. Shayna and Shane then share a little, honestly, pretty cute, wholesome moment. Uh, they bring back some other idea they both had back in the day. And then uh, Shayna also says that, you know, if you're ever in Greece, you can come visit. And he says, what? But then Shane says some real shit. He says that he's going to work on himself instead of just throwing himself into the dating pool again. Can't. Why? You must not ready. I am ready to move onward and upward uh, with my life. Right, thank you, Shane. Thanks. I'm ready to move onward and upward with my life. As opposed to what, man? With your dick? Any life? No. Um, that's not existent right now. But I still love a girl who can rock a good crop top. Big Daddy Shane loves crop tops. And just like that, I don't even want to hear anything this man has to say ever again. Oh my god, he ruined it. I thought that he was doing so well. I was like, damn, Shane has like a redemption arc. And then he leans over and he's like, Daddy Shane, look. Daddy Shane. Don't ever call yourself Daddy Shane. That's third person, which is already, eh. Uh, calling yourself daddy, uh, unless it's with your partner, like, in the confines of your home. Could you imagine if I was just like, Daddy Leo doesn't like to be disappointed. Everybody would be like, God damn, I'm not your friend anymore. You know what would be funny? What? If we want to start our own little drama, we could post a little photo together. Wait, the fact that it's at his restaurant is even funny. Well, we gotta tag him in the text. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, Shane then has a genius idea to have a, a close picture with Shayna and then get everyone talking as if these two wouldn't have met and they know Natalie's gonna see this and probably not sleep for the next week. They, You know, it's actually not the worst plan and if this was a plot in a movie, them getting back at the people who pretty much ostracized them, it's not too heartless. And I mean, I don't think it's too harmless either. It's just two people taking a picture. I, I actually really enjoyed the last part of their friendship when they're not overdoing it. There's, there doesn't seem to be any sexual energy or anything that's left out. They both seem to be in places where they're they're going to benefit, which which is kind of cool to see people thriving at the end of the day. There we go. No, like that, yes. That is how the series ends. Now there is one thing that I said we need proof of, and that is the text messages that show that Shane and Shayna were exchanging some explicit things or doing something. And the people of Netflix, the good people of Netflix and Love is Blind, actually questioned all of the castmates involved and said, did you actually see anything? Did anybody show you anything? And here's what they had to say. I haven't seen the text myself. I haven't seen any of the texts. Um, or anything. No, I have not physically seen the text myself. Not text messages, it was just messages. Okay, so apparently it wasn't text messages, just messages. I, I think the semantics could, I think if they saw any messages, it would be the same, but okay. So it seems that nobody's seen it. She has these magnificent fart in the wind DMs. If they're out there, please show everyone. I have nothing to hide. And it ends with Shane saying he has nothing to hide. He meant hide, but anyway. Oh, one more. One more secret ending. Marvel ending too. Danielle and Nick. The couple that invited everyone. The couple that is the best couple of all time. They said this. I feel so far removed from being single yeah, that I don't even like, think I know how to be single anymore. That's one of the coolest things about being married. It's like you can plan something a year from now and know that it's going to be with that person. So, yeah, Danielle says she can plan things years in advance because she knows she's going to be with that person. Nick is like, I don't even know how to be single. And Danielle's like, I love married life. And the kicker, of course, is that Danielle filed for divorce from Nick before Love is Blind after the altar aired, but the two filmed the show while still together. Now is the bombshell time. You've made it to the end. I'm going to judge these people because Love is Blind, but Leo judges. Today I'm judging. 
Yeah, so Nick and Daniel broke up the show's strongest couple, the ones that were seen as the pillar and the people that we should all aspire to be with, which means out of the two couples that actually got married, only one is together. So out of all of the people on Love is Blind, only two people said yes at the altar, and those were Jared and Ayana and Daniel and Nick. And Daniel and Nick, to me, the strongest couple, they file for divorce. So I'm going to judge these people. Daniel and Nick seem like they were nice people. I think they still can be nice people, but they have some really tendency, some tendencies that I actually think are really, really bad. And those tendencies are when Nick was like, if you invite Shake, I'm not going. Imposing his will and stuff. It's stuff like that. And when Daniel sort of shit stood and said, I don't want to invite Shayna, but I'm going to. It's stuff that behind the veil hides what's truly going on. That's why as a couple, those two looked a certain part, but behind scenes, maybe we're different. And I really don't like that. What they've said has been great, but what they've done and the clickish nature of those two being the ringleaders have made me have some sort of not really like towards them. Because I think you should still let people talk, even if they're flawed people. I think flawed individuals deserve to have a voice as well, really. So I'm going to give them a C, because I don't see them together. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so how about Shayna? Shayna's doing well, I think. Love is Blind star Shayna Hurley has dreamy second wedding to Christos Lardakis in Greece. So the two married, and uh, it's very cute. And they seem to love each other. whatever For whatever reason, Shayna has found a dude who absolutely loves her to death. And that might just be because you put out what you attract in the world. Now, I don't know if this is going to last. I never know. But it seems like because he's not from the show, it actually has a chance. It's got some legs. Let's hope they're doing well. Shane seems to be happy. Her life is her life. And all of the people from Love is Blind who may not like her don't actually matter in her life more than she needs them to and she hasn't brought them up all of her pictures are just really nice they're not about other people she seems to be pretty cool sorry i was just reading the dms people are still uh pretty ruthless in the dms and on comments about these two but i think shayna is living her best life or at least trying to i'm gonna give her a b i do think in the past she wasn't that truthful but i think now is an important time to move on. And I think if you can't learn to move on, then you're going to be stuck in the past. If Shayna continues to do bad stuff, then it'll come back and haunt her. Karma is a bitch. It really is. So I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Say B, not an A, because she wasn't always an A. She was a B at the time. But, you know, she's happy with someone. Let's move on to uh, Kyle. I like Kyle. Like I said, I think he's a good dude. I'm sorry that Kyle is such a baby at times but you know what he's a good baby and he seems to be doing great with the oh shit never mind i understand many of you are curious as to where deep d and i stand today since after the altar was filmed we had decided to go our separate ways in early summer thank you to everyone who's followed our journey through arduous vulnerability and has supported us the long way i've since embarked on a new relationship which i intend to keep private for a bit as for what the future holds I have no clue. Going forward, I plan to live each day in the present without regret. Hey, I respect it. They tried. It didn't work out. That's fine. Absolutely, Kyle. You're a pretty cool dude. I give you a B plus. The only reason I don't give you an A is because you took so long to do it. You dope. I guess that brings me to deep tea. And um, honestly, I think this is pretty easy. I just give her an A. Unfortunately, this girl has dealt with Shake and had to uh, be a byproduct of that on television. She managed to weigh that really well and also have, uh, you know, history with Kyle. She's managed to remain throughout this a pretty graceful and lovely person. And I really don't see any issue with her at all. It's just maybe the timing and situations. She hasn't said anything uh, bad. She hasn't done anything bad. I think she's a really cool person. That's really all I have to say. And I hope that whoever she ends up with is a good person, because she is. Genuinely. Uh, the next person I'll bring up is Smiley Jones and The Scream. Smiley Jones, of course, is Sal and The Scream is Jesse. Uh, I think his relationship to Mallory was weird in the fact that he managed to leave her just one week before saying something. Uh, Mallory even said that person was just 
her best friend but maybe there are other things behind the scenes that we didn't think about i don't know what to say about sal and his girlfriend i think maybe um i don't know maybe they weren't good during that moment i think the fact that they were invited and the fact that daniel and other people asked about their relationship in front of mallory shows how insincere they are and like i said i'm not sure exactly what being drunk in a car with someone means and i don't know if it's warranted enough to have you leave but if this man is happy with his partner then he's happy with his partner if we're gonna move on and move into the future from the little i know about them i'm gonna give them combined a c because she is a c of loudness and he is a c of desperation i i don't hate them i think they're fine i just don't i don't know where it's going if that makes sense. So I figured out uh, two things about this one. First of all, his name is not Jared, it's Jarrett. I apologize for that. Uh, secondly, they were the only other couple to say yes. And of course, they've said no. They too have gotten a divorce. Love is Blind has a 0% success rate at this point. Uh, they did put out a statement, both of them, saying, What's going on, family? After much thought, we're saddened to share that we've separated and will begin the process of divorcing. We have love for each other. Our lives are going in different directions, and that's okay. Coming to this decision was far from easy, and we will always wish each other the absolute best. I guess they made a decision. That's not always a bad thing, and hopefully they both grow. In fact, I even looked at the comments, and Ayana's still messaging, and still commenting, and doing the nice things. She's awesome. I think I have to break these two up worse than they already have. Ayana, I would say gets an A. And Jarrett, I would say gets a B minus. I don't think he's a bad dude. I think he just can't kick that one habit. And maybe he just needs to find a person who's more like him. And maybe Ayana needs to find a person who's more like her. That might just be the issue. And who knows? Even in the future, they could come back together. But... I don't think they're malicious in any way, and they're pretty self-involved. In Not bad people, just bad situation. I guess this brings me to the last two people, Natalie and Shane. I'll, I'll deal with Natalie first. So, again, I've said this before, I don't think the stuff that Natalie's done has been amazing. I think that she's not always been treated with respect from Shane, which is important to note and maybe why she does certain things. But I do think that holding on to the past doesn't get you towards the future. I think reading the comments is really hurtful when I actually look at the series because there's a very skewed um, relationship with Love is Blind and its contestants. I, I, I realized that most of the girls get support from other people online and unfortunately, most of the guys take flack. Not all of them, but most of them. And uh, I guess if Shayna's the only girl that takes flack as well, it's kind of sad that people can't actually let their opinions be heard in a safe space because at the end of the day, these are people too. And although I may, you know, have certain opinions and stuff, I respect each and every one of them for putting themselves out there as people. And I think each and every one of them can learn and better themselves. Natalie has some qualities I don't agree with. That doesn't mean she's a bad person by any means. And so does Shane. It doesn't mean I like him by any means. We're just in a space where we can learn and grow. I think what Natalie did uh, was a bit of instigation. I think that other people can agree. And also with the help of Daniel and other stuff, they became clickish and didn't actually explore the stuff that they wanted to. I wish that Natalie got the closure she deserved and probably would move on. But I hope that she does move on and it is her year next year. I hope that she finds that happiness and finds better people who she can trust without having these thoughts. And I, I think it'll happen for her. I think she gets a B. I do feel sorry for the position that she's been in and been put in because of Shane. But at the same time, uh, everyone agreed to be on the show. Now we get to Shane. My boy. Shane something, man. Shane goes through this journey of self-healing. Let's see if it actually works out. Dude is um, definitely a firecracker and uh, a meth smoker, probably. But the things that I have seen that I like is that he's worked out, he's went to the gym, and he seems to have his mental health in check. He also said that dating is off the table until he can work on himself, and it's just not a thing for him now. So I hope that with time, you learn how to love yourself before you let others love you. I think in terms of his self-improvement journey, that's pretty good. Now, I'm stuck on the fence about this one. 
because I do appreciate the fact that he's self-reflective. I also don't appreciate the fact that I think we've been here before. So I'm going to give him a C plus because I'd like to see what happens. Plus, see where he goes with this. He could have been an A if he actually really did something, but it's that voice in the law. I did, I did say we are going to talk about Shake one more time. And my boy Shake, who's been left out of everything, has had the last laugh. The person who said love is blurry and been lambasted by everyone on the series. People hated on Shake. People constantly said, you are the D-bag. And he was. He's the D-bag with a T-bag. But out of everyone who went on that show, Shane, who said that he likes white women who are tall and skinny, found one. And she found him back. And when we initially saw them going out, I was like, hmm, that's not gonna last. I was wrong. They're still going out. In fact, they co-host a shitty podcast together. I don't know whether to be impressed or depressed about it. It's actually crazy that <laughs> Shake put up a picture called Love is Blurry with his current girlfriend. And I don't know if they're getting engaged or married, but he seems to be with her and she seems to be with him. And his comments are filled with positive energy, which means everyone who is talking shit about him has left and he's only got the good people in his life. In fact, the people who said that he was the worst are now divorced on the show, which leaves me in an odd position because this man now is a successful vet who has a partner that he really loves and puts up on his channel all the time. He also did it by telling the truth and standing his ground against people who hated on him to the point they started liking him again. That's Bola. Shake. You get an A plus, buddy. You get an A plus because you're an asshole. Plus, you managed to beat everyone. I can't believe you did it, but I have to shake your hand. <laughs> it's not that funny. I think here's a comment that was probably the best way to describe Shake and the series. You definitely know what you want and are going for it. Congrats to you for being your true self. Also, you handled your mom giving you constructive criticism like a champ. I'd have a hard time swallowing my mom ugh, being on the other side of that person I was dating and took criticism really well. It showed me a thing or two. Imperfect beings can sometimes be more enlightening than those who are attempting to showcase themselves as perfect. And I think that is a great way to end the series. There's a reason that I always gravitated towards these people by being like, hmm, I don't like what they're saying, but at least they're saying it. Because it's hard to hide these feelings if you actually put them out into the air as opposed to people showing the best versions on, of themselves and then eventually the cracks show. I think it's important to be completely yourself, for better or for worse, because it leaves the people who don't like you out and it attracts the people who do like you in. I think there's a million things that he shouldn't have said. However, I'm not him. Thank God. But at the same time, we have to realize that the only people who actually seem to have partners are the ones that we seem to have not liked when the show started. And that is more telling than it should be. Love is blind. Love is also blurry. I think at the end of the day, the only thing I can say is that if there's someone that you truly love, tell them. Leave no stone unturned and communicate. Hopefully it'll work out. And if it doesn't, there'll be someone better out there. Whether you're happy, sad, bitter, or mad, you're on your journey to finding that person if you haven't already. Good luck to everyone and peace. Thank you. Please put me on Love is Blind season four. I want to I want to show people how to do it. 16 Leo. Hey, do you have a nice ass? Is that the first question you can ask? That's the only question I need. Yes. Then I'll marry you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.